Welcome, Aliona. Hello, Murad. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I wish you have a good Sunday. Thanks, you too. Have a great weekend. Yeah, thank you. Well, today we've met, maybe because we want to discuss some questions, which could be useful for English learners. Yeah, uh, I would like to say also questions. Okay, uh, could you introduce yourself? My name is Alona. I'm from Lugansk People Republic, that is on the territory of Ukraine, close to Russia, if somebody yet doesn't know. I'm an English teacher. Um, I work both at the university and I have my own private uh, classes uh, where I teach teens and other school children. Also, I work with adults. So I have a huge variety of work. Well, and English is not only my profession, but it's also my passion right now. Because I love meeting people from all over the world. I love exchanging some cultural tips, cultural um, experience. And it make, I think it makes our minds to grow. That's it. What about you, Murat? Can you could you please introduce yourself and why do you, and say why do you need English? Actually, uh, you know that English is common uh, communication uh, language. Mm -hmm. It's very important, uh, especially you you work uh, some areas uh, and uh, also every time English you need English uh, you need to uh, speak and to communicate other people uh, business or whatever things maybe you want to travel somewhere and of course you need the common uh, language but also uh, in Turkey we uh, we start to learn uh, English language first sec as a second language also mm -hmm. and uh, we started maybe in primary but actually in the end uh, we, we, we couldn't learn English I think that uh, we see the English lessons just on lessons not communication tool mm -hmm. but what kind of work have you got why do you need it for work who are you What is your speciality? Thank you. I'm an industrial, industrial engineer. This area or uh, other areas, uh, a lot of things, sources in English, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the second question. The first time you got acquainted with English, you came mm -hmm. in English. Mm -hmm. What was the first word you learned? Mm -hmm. So, it was self-study. I was six, I guess. It was before school. I had a book at my home uh, for children to learn English. So there were like words in, with pictures. There were pictures of some words, words in English, transcription in English, and transcription written, written with Russian letters. So I learned it on my own. And also I had a friend and I made her learn these words too. <laughs> So I've got those teaching skills from my childhood. So the first word was apricot. Hey, apricot. And when did you start learning English? But Actually, I, I couldn't remember, uh, certainly. Uh, but I know that I, I was very patient uh, with English because I think that my, par uh, my parents, my parents some support, a little bit support me. And um, yeah, I, I loved English, but I, 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 I didn't use the time. So at school I was pretty diligent, industrious, hard working student because uh, I don't know why but I loved studying so it was my passion. But then when I came to When I entered the university and first two years, seeing that I'm top student, I don't need to <laughs> be hardworking. I'm fine with those knowledges I had. So as far as I had two uh, speciality, like we also had uh, French. So I practiced French and other subjects, not English, up to some moment on the third course. Well, I did sometimes, but it was not uh, so uh, good as I could do. Okay. But on the third course, I did. Okay. Uh -huh. can, you, can you define yourself when you were at school? 
as a nerd? Probably, yeah. But it was not like I still had. We still had fun at the lessons, and I had friends. We were also. I got those notes from teachers when we were singing songs on the last. Like I was sitting at the last uh, desk with my friend, and we were singing songs on math lessons. Mm-hmm. So I don't think it was like I was some dull or boring person. I just managed to do that well. And I helped lots of my friends. All those people who were sitting around, they were my friends and I helped with them. So we had good relationships. But at university, first it was different. But on the third course, I started working hard because I was going to work at the United States. So I was working hard. Do do you still talk with your school friends? Yeah, with some with some we are still in touch so were you a good student or uh, especially before university i'm not patient about the school and lessons uh, but i uh, i had passed when when i go, uh, when i went to university uh, i catch up patient mm-hmm. about the lessons uh, then i i got uh, really succeed in university and in cyprus I'm talking about Cyprus, but then I again I passed Turkey mm-hmm. uh, when I finished my university. That average point. point. That's okay. But well, it I th- I feel like it's okay when we we can't be all the time love something. Mm-hmm. Something changes in education. It happens. Well, if you couldn't uh, go to uh, in just civil uh, engineering. Mm-hmm industry where would you else could go yeah maybe uh, it would be more social section uh, but uh, i would uh, want to be go abroad for university and uh, did, did you choose to graduation program his philology and how could you do that actually it was my uh, jackpot because first of all i studied french and english both at school and when i <clears throat> Uh, was passing exam to my university. It appeared that we could ha- have the chance to um, <clears throat> to obtain, like, to graduate both specialty at the same time. So I did, and I think it was a really good decision because some students who were studying, who were getting uh, education, the same. Uh, department as I did, they rejected because, <clears throat> you know, having extra classes, uh, extra exams and everything like twice more, not a little bit more, but twice. We worked, we were the most loaded group on our faculty. We had double periods every Saturday morning to 7.30 French lessons every week. <laughs> but we did that. <laughs> And I think it was a really good decision because, yeah, I like French and English and it's really, it's great to know more language. The more language is the better. Yeah, I I have seen you and you can speak two languages fluently. It was just a second, not more. (laughs) Yeah, maybe three languages we can say with Russian. Yeah, Russian and Ukrainian too. We also speak Ukrainian here. People. Yeah, so far. Are they different? Yeah, a little bit. Like, they different. Oh, really? They are the same group. Yeah, there is like Russian, Ukrainian and Belarusian. They're a little bit different. So if I meet, for example, person from Belarus, I will understand because I know two languages. But Russian always make, make fun of Ukrainian and Belarusian because it sounds funny for them. How, In how U- much percentage simil- are similar these languages? Uh, maybe 70. Oh, maybe a little bit higher. But there are... That because there are some funny words, that is why I can feel it and how it is because um, Azerbaijan and Turkish languages are different basically, but we can understand it with each other. Yeah, maybe, maybe this kind of yes, uh, yes, difference, yeah, yeah. I think. And what kind of ability have you got thanks to studying philology? Philologist is a person who knows language much deeper, its story, uh, some specific lexical, phonetic, grammatical thing. So it gives you deeper view of the language. So um, and also philologists are people who can express their thoughts better than people of 
uh, some scientific maybe or practical professions. And it helps everywhere, I think, if you communicate to people. So those skills will help. That helped me to, to improve my speech, uh, communicative skills. How can you speak you know, French uh, fluently? Maybe I can understand English, but how can you tell in two languages? Well, I told you we worked hard while in the university and also uh, when I was invited to work mm -hmm. to school, to gymnasium <clears throat> in my town, uh, my first teaching experience was teaching French and my students loved it a lot because we sang songs of Je de Seine. Mm -hmm. I see tu n'existe pas. Do you know those songs? No? no? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we sang a lot of songs, watched films. Uh, they laughed when I called them Monsieur, Mademoiselle. I always use that <laughs> on my lessons and they love that so much. I don't know, maybe that practice helped me. But frankly speaking, I don't have so much practice and haven't had for a long time of French comparing to English. English is a much higher level right now. How don't, how don't you mix these languages when you speak English or French? How don't I miss? How don't you mix? Well, it's just, I think, the stereotype that they can be. Actually, the more languages person speaks, the more flexible his brain becomes. Uh, have, con have you continued your education? Yeah, I continued it after completing bachelor degree. I continued a uh, magister course and completed it. So I got master degree on French philology, in French philology, and um, I worked for some period of time, and two years ago I started the pre, uh, the postgraduate degree, so I'm doing now some research in philology, teaching philology with modern technologies. Mm -hmm. So I hope probably soon I will get the PhD degree We'll see. Yeah, very good, very good. How does this help you? You mean uh, all your, kinds your of grade, education? Yeah. How, yeah. How does this help you when you teach? Yeah. Um, my um, thesis is about video blogging. So I used these methods for a couple of time before, maybe a year. I was taking videos of some popular bloggers about Australia, England, or the United States of America. Not some specific um, films. Well, we did that too. But uh, opportunity to listen to native speaker with his emotions, thoughts, and modern expressions, I considered it as a very useful. For uh, skill, so I used that before, and I never regret for choosing that topic. It's really something new, cool. I mean, it wasn't really much uh, researched. There are some works, but they are not very typical now. So I'm doing that, and you see, we've already met really cool video blogger, English teacher Chris Porton, and that connection also helps a lot. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not the work that helps me, but my work, I mean, thesis, thesis appears because of I work in this sphere. No, actually, it's very popular learning management systems on internet. And uh, have you ever heard about Udemy or um, another learning management systems contents websites? Uh, online courses. If I, learned... I mean, I mean that uh, online. Courses. Yeah. 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 I've learned, but I'm saying about. It is not uh, yet well developed in scientific area, like described as a phenomena, as a linguistic kind of phenomena, because it's in something new, very popular. Everybody know about that. And even when I was presented some results, um, all those professors and PhD um, candidates, they were when they were reading my short reports, they were saying, oh, cool. Well, they didn't know that I'm going to now to say about it. They were just sitting there. I got them the paper and they were reading like, oh, cool. The topic would be very useful to implement in a school system. Mm -hmm. 
because kids are watching YouTube and uh, follow different video bloggers. It would be useful for English lessons. And I was like, I already do that, ladies. <laughs> so, yeah, I know there's a lot, but it is not written much in a scientific style. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, how many years, and seventh question, how many years have you been teaching? Mm -hmm. Well, my total legal... <laughs> <laughs> experience uh, is 13 years mm -hmm. but like I started tutoring since the first course so it's 16 probably well I started working when I was studying at the fourth course mm -hmm. it was not a full time job just part time mm -hmm. but I like that and uh, when you when you teach something and when you when you enter the lesson uh, Mm -hmm. You'll tell, you tell about the uh, lesson and you notice that the students uh, can understand you. What do you do that time? Well, I try again or I'll try to get from the other side to help them. Well, actually now very often works technique if um, somebody couldn't get the other student really is willing to explain. So I think that's interactive method really good. And also in adult group, for example, I've explained some phenomena grammatical and then we start practicing in somebody can like one for one uh, student can't get it then other turns to him and he says look here and here we use this and there we use that and i think it's really useful when you explain something it helps a lot so um um how to say uh it's um I think it's i can't say that now i already explain perfectly sometimes <laughs> i used to imaginative thoughts and my students can get frustrated not understanding me but i'm really trying to do my best to explain something if i can do that i find i try to find other ways mm -hmm. but i don't think it happens lately very often but it happens so if you don't understand something, what do you do, for example, in English? And uh, actually, uh, you, you said uh, when I in classroom, uh, if if uh, if we say and if we talk uh, about English teaching, I always patient. Uh, also, when I when I was in university, I was patient English teacher teaching and lessons. Uh, I always. Mm, attend the lessons and uh, topics and whatever. Actually, my English in when I was university very good. Mm -hmm. uh, I I have passed it easily. Proficiency exam. I I have studied a lot of my friends. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. good. I taught. You were teaching them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes and not only uh, English and. Maybe sometimes they struggle math, math, physics. I helped my friends. So you're a good teacher. I don't know. Not. not, <laughs> not. I, I say not. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, yeah, uh, I want to ask. Uh, for example, when you enter the class, uh, you saw a student uh, who is not motivated, who is not motivated, and uh, not interested uh, with lesson and your talking in the classroom. And that time, what do you do? Do you do you do you ignore that student and continue telling lesson and continue lesson, or uh, do you try to get attention that student? As you remember, I have I work at the university and also I have like private groups. That's why I left school because there's too much extra work and a lot of not motivated students. Well, I was working in a pretty prestigious school, one of the most popular in our town. And usually there were children who were motivated to get knowledge and to learn. But still there were kids who didn't like and I took it too personally, but now I understand that it just may be some 
problems in the family or problems with mood, teenagers are growing, everything can happen. It's not because of you, because you're a bad teacher or something. But I was uh, I was thinking that kind, that I'm a bad teacher. Uh, and, you know, um, I figured out now having, when some, some time passed, some of my, the worst students ever uh, who were at school, they are happily writing me in social media, boasting their success in any sphere of life or meeting me in the street and running to hug me. But I was like, come on, you made me feel so terrible at the lessons. But they are still, they didn't, they didn't actually take me as a bad teacher. They just were not good students and it's okay. So I, yeah, I tried my best. I tried to talk privately. I tried to make them get interested, get involved. You can do everything, but if there is no motivation, you'll never succeed. Now having private groups, my students, almost all of them are motivated. There's only one boy <laughs> who I'm struggling right now, but we are like we are becoming like a family because he practices English with me for quite a long time and he knows that he needs that, but probably he has a difficult age, like 12, and he struggles and I'm struggling and his mom, I'm str he's struggling. So in these cases, I try to find some good way. We talk, like some, but I demand, I still demand to do the task, like if it was... Given your homework, you should do that in any way. <laughs> we have to finish, I guess. Yeah, yeah actually, uh, we finished questions.